banks are being pushed farther and farther away. Gentic commerce, then everybody wants a piece of it. It makes sure that they're good bots. And so it's gonna unleash a whole new host of problems. A Visa and a MasterCard logo. Value proposition has shifted to a network that secures the transaction, regardless yep. of how the money eventually moves. Hey Simon, it's good to see you as always. Good to be back, Rex, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm in a different location than usual because I'm en route to see the Oracle from Omaha. Uh, Buffett is only, you know, not getting any younger. Don't know how much longer he'll be with us. I figured it'd be a good once in a lifetime opportunity. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. See the legend. Let me know how it is, man. I'm excited for you. I, yeah, I'm not in my usual location as well. Calling in from a WeWork because I'm having so much home renovation done. Uh, so uh, excited to be back with you. Excited to talk all things agentic commerce because it feels like everybody's announcing a thing lately. Yeah, and agentic commerce is exciting to dive into. And it's funny because there's so many companies that have announced so many things. But if you look at agentic payment volumes, they basically don't exist yet. Well, I mean, look, the idea is a, a solid one, right? Let's just define it, uh, which is uh, I'm talking to my personal agent about shopping. Hey, I need a new outfit because I'm going to a wedding. And it looks up the location and the weather and it figures out, okay, so you're probably going to want this and your size is this. So here are the four or five options. Would you like me to buy this? Okay, it's coming tomorrow. Like that personal shopper type of experience would make, would just be like the dream everybody wants. And that's what all of these companies are fighting to be. If this is going to be the thing after e-commerce is agentic commerce, then everybody wants a piece of it. And it feels inevitable. It's just uh, who's going to own it. So yeah, there's lots of companies making announcements. And it is inevitable. I think that's why everyone's getting on top of it. I think the tech ecosystem is just better at getting on top of new trends than they used to be. And that's kind of hinting at it too. But yeah, the big question is who is going to be that buy button in your AI chat experience? Might not even be a button. You might just be having a conversation and that opens up all new kinds of questions about who authorizes what, about fraud. But I thought first I'd just walk through kind of who has announced what, and then we could dive into some of the questions about how this paradigm shift, you know, does and doesn't fit into our current infrastructure, architecture, you know, commonly accepted practices, if that sounds good. Well, let's go. Uh, so first up, uh, talk about what Stripe is doing. So they've got Agent Toolkit SDK. It basically is a Python TypeScript agent that calls Stripe billing, issuing and checkout, all via an API. Um, volumes, don't really know what volumes are. What Stripe says is they're having thousands of downloads per day, but you know, these are probably developers just experimenting, playing around, as opposed to big companies pushing things out into production. Um, but John Collison is pretty excited about it, calls it a big unlock uh, for, you know, as big an unlock as mobile checkout was in 2010. So that's Stripe, um, not sitting still. Affirm, they have their Adapt AI promotions engine. Not, we're not just talking about, you know, how do you do the payment, Simon? It's also, well, how do you attach financing at the point of sale? Like, that's a whole nother interesting conversation besides just, like, authorizing a card. How do you decide if, you know, you should pay 0% APR in 4 or 12? Uh, and that's what they're trying to be is, like, a BNPL for the credit on file in these agenda flows. Again, super early. Um, Adyen, they have their new uh, autonomous store stack. This is something that's a little bit more associated with what, you know, Amazon Go is doing with their Go stores yeah. where you don't even have an individual there uh, checking you out at the till. You actually just walk in, put things in your cart, walk away. Uh, I tried to pull those volumes because I was kind of curious where those are. Those volumes are estimated as sub 5 billion in TPV. So still pretty early, even for Amazon Go checkouts in one form of, you know, pseudo agentic flow that's been with us for five years. Uh, and then last, and I'll kind of announce them together because, well, they announced them together. <laughs> Visa and MasterCard both announced their two kind of agentic things. MasterCard beat them to the punch. Uh, that was on April 29th. And then Visa came out the next day on April 30th. I wonder if uh, one of them maybe pulled forward their announcement when they heard the other or, if, you know, just great minds think alike. Who knows? All to preempt the other. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, both of them there, they've done a lot of work because we have all these virtual cards that are being issued from companies you know, like Ramp, like Brex, like lots of other folks. We've also got the tokenization and authentication rails. So there's definitely some of this infrastructure that's already there, that's kind of purpose built or will be, I think, relatively easy to adapt to this new paradigm. But I thought it'd be good for you to dive into like, what do you think are some of the issues where 
there are big questions about, you know, how consumers use this. What are the, the issues of implementation, fraud, authorization, all of that kind of stuff? Well, let me just make sense of some of these pieces, because the most real here, I think, of the Stripe one, the PayPal one, Visa and MasterCard. So yeah. Stripe has built an SDK that is live with perplexity today. If you search for products with perplexity pro, you can let the AI agent go buy it for you on the website. And then once you've done that, it can buy multiple things on that website with a Stripe virtual card. And that's something they've been able to contain with virtual cards. As you say, some yep. of this stuff already existed and Stripe has neatly put that together. And of course, most AI companies happen to be Stripe customers. So if they would have the demand first. It's the natural shelling point for something like this to be early. And, uh, Jeff Weinstein uh, helped me put together uh, a blog post recently called The Four Models of Agentic Commerce. And one of those models is the virtual card. That is really quite doable, uh, just like uh, expend management companies give virtual cards to their employees. You can limit what people can spend to a single transaction, to single categories, to certain amounts. So it really reduces the amount of risk surface area that you kind of got to work with. And that's, yeah. that's kind of what the Agentic Commerce API does. Now, what Visa and MasterCard have announced is quite different. Uh, their tokenization for agents starts to look like the very beginning of Apple Pay. So when you add Apple Pay, uh, an Apple Pay card to your mobile phone, what you really do is add a token into your mobile phone. And this tokenization is also flowing throughout the network and you exchange that token with Visa, the acquirer processor, all of the banks, and that's how we manage fraud risk and controls. And what both of the networks have done is announce their sort of tokenization for AI agents. And that could start to unlock a whole bunch of things in the near future. We don't know exactly how. The other difference between the Visa and MasterCard announcement that wouldn't be important for some folks to understand is uh, MasterCard announced that they're doing tokenization on the day before Visa announced they're doing agent tokenization. But Visa had a whole bunch of partners involved and did a big product launch around it. MasterCard did not, which makes me wonder who preempted who here. Um, so Visa partnered with OpenAI and Anthropic and Microsoft and lining up those corporates takes a little bit of time. So I imagine that took some time. Um, to your point, though, what happens if an AI agent suddenly starts buying things I didn't want it to. Yeah, and, and maybe let's back up to the announcements just real quickly, because I think there's one big obvious point that's pretty interesting, which is it seems to me like Visa and MasterCard and card rails generally are gonna be where a lot of agentic commerce flows happen. Do you think that's true? Or is there a chance that agentic commerce starts to move us away from Visa and MasterCard networks? I think if you look at the flex credential that Visa and um, I, and also MasterCard One's token, that where they've moved is they've said that the token, the identity, the, the, the payment device is moving to mobile and is moving elsewhere and the yeah. token is becoming the center of gravity. So we're moving away from the card itself and the card yeah. network being the only way money can flow towards like that money could flow via the card scheme it could flow via open banking and it, real time payments it could flow via stable coins but you happen to use the token to do it and they want to be the standard yeah. setter for that so even if that did happen then yes, I, th I think your point behind your point is right, which is uh, it's probably going to happen with something like a Visa and a MasterCard logo. And their value proposition has shifted from being a network that moves money to a network that secures the transaction, regardless yep. of how the money eventually moves. And if it happens on AI agents, we need that standard for how does that transaction happen at the checkout uh, or yeah. point of payment. That's That's absolutely right. And we think of Visa and MasterCard as being synonymous with the card because that's how they started. And the card, you know, you think about the primary account number on your card. But they're getting rid of that, I think, at MasterCard by 2030. They're phasing out. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what Visa is. So to your point, we're moving away from this idea of, like, card at all into tokenization. A lot of it will be still be card-like, but they are working on ways to connect that to, you know, pay by bank, maybe even, you know, connect it to stablecoin issuance, which they've done in the past. So, yeah, the core tokenization and messaging framework. 
we keep wondering, like, is anyone ever going to disrupt Visa and MasterCard? And I think if they can live through the agentic AI, you know, payments revolution, man, it's just hard to disrupt these networks. Yeah, and the value proposition they offer is people confuse what these companies really sell. They sell acceptance. They sell, like, when you see this logo, the payment will work. And the problem with that is it's not a technical challenge. It's a risk challenge. It's a, what happens when something goes wrong? What happens if I buy something and the goods never show up? What happens if they show up and they're faulty? What happens if I buy something and the merchant wasn't real? What happens the other way around if a customer comes to uh, buy something from me and uh, like is a fraudster? And is a or yeah. is a known criminal or something. So there are all of these like edge cases of things that can go wrong. And in yep. the digital realm, that's way way harder because being a fraudster in real life with cash is incredibly hard. It's like incredibly hard to buy clothes with cash as a fraudster um, and get them delivered to the wrong place. Whereas in e-commerce, that's much more risky. So we've had to develop yeah. all of these ways of dealing with it. I think that happens again with AI agents because we were just starting to build our fraud controls and our risk controls around what happens in e-commerce, how do we manage the risk on fraud. Yep. But then if there's an AI agent that comes along, how do I know that's a good AI agent? How do I know that it's one that has the authority to spend the money it's spending? How do I know its user is happy with what it's doing? does is any human even aware of what it's doing yep. and so having that like check 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 it suddenly gets very complex and this is the perfect place for tokenization and people that solve that trust problem that finance has always yeah had. yeah we've spent so long at checkout verifying like are you the actual human and are you a human at all no mm -hmm. bots allowed and now it's like, oh, you're gonna have to open up and start letting bots do things, but make sure that they're good bots. And so it's gonna unleash a whole new host of problems that will just, you know, fraudsters well, are created, I can imagine so like learn, a, by, a, learn by doing. A two by two. Is it a good bot or a bad bot? Is it a good human or a bad human? So this could be a good bot that had been operating quite happily that has been taken over by yeah. a bad human. So I think this is something that's good that's landed on my homepage, but so, something I now can't see as a merchant, my fraud controls can't see, has happened. The other way around, is this a perfectly good human, but they've installed some malicious bot that's now spending yeah. all of their money in malicious ways that they don't even know about? And how do I help the user with that? Like, all of these questions start to emerge. And I, I think the, the thing that we've really got to... Uh, imagine is a lot of these agents might be created by open ai they might be created by someone else but they really aren't necessarily rooted inside of a banking app we're moving away mm -hmm. from the primary user interface being that banking application being that controlled user interface further and further away it went into apple pay yep. now potentially it's going into an agent that can do all of these other things this is this is very, very strange place for banks in particular to be finding themselves. Yeah, so Visa and MasterCard seem fine. That's a great point. The issuers are banks. And if you as the consumer aren't even thinking about your card when you place a payment, you're not thinking about your relationship with the bank. You're not thinking about other things you'd be buying from the bank. You might not be logging into your bank account. Some of the identity and consent in the existing card frameworks, you actually have to log into your bank account and authenticate like a transaction through 3DS. So yeah, banks, are being pushed farther and farther away from where consumers are spending their time. Already happened with Apple Pay and Google Pay. Agentic Commerce, I think, just pushes it even farther away. 100%, um, man. Well, we could talk about this one a lot. I'm sure we'll keep coming back to it, but man, it's gonna be a fascinating thing. What are your takeaways uh, from, from these announcements? Yeah, I think the big one is just like Visa and MasterCard are in pretty great position. We're still super early. There's still a lot of questions. There are even questions about what the questions are going to be because this is so new. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big questions I think about is liability. Like who owns, if a bot does the wrong kind of purchase, who owns that at what level? And all of that's gonna have to be agreed upon by consumers, merchants, and networks. And this is again why I think Visa and MasterCard are pretty sticky. You need someone like a network 
to facilitate that conversation, to come to a common agreement. And if you don't have a network, you don't want to have thousands of bilateral agreements between different parties. Uh, not to talk about tariffs, but you can see how trying to have thousands of bilateral agreements tends to create chaos uh, in the world, in the economic world. So it's going to be interesting to watch. And I'm enjoying watching some of these announcements come out, but I'm also trying to pay attention to like, who's going to start showing real volumes. Uh, and I think people will start talking about when, you know, it starts to cross 2% of TPV and that starts to show up in an annual report. Uh, and called out from a financial metric standpoint. But right now, I don't think the term agentic commerce has even shown up in a 10K or a 10Q. So that'll be the next step is uh, yeah. you know, agentic commerce coming out in Visa or MasterCard's 10K, 10Q. We'll start to see that soon. Well, it, we probably will see stable coins in there soon. Um, and maybe last cycle, you didn't see that. It was funny to when the Visa announcement came out, it was parallel with a stablecoin set of announcements, Visa's partnered with Bridge and Stripe to able, enable card issuing in six, six countries through a single API. Now, that to me feels like product market fit, real traction, different kind of growth to agentic commerce, which is everybody kind of agrees it's the next big thing, yeah. but we don't know when. Yeah, any other big takeaways for you? Uh, the big thing for me is uh, moving from SEO and playing the game of marketing on Instagram to AEO. What's my uh, agent engine optimization look like? How do I become attractive to AI agents? I'm already spending a lot of my time uh, at Sardine making sure that our content is the type of stuff that ChatGPT would surface. And funnily enough, ChatGPT yep. really likes pithy, easy to comprehend, plain English problem solving answers to questions, which kind of plays quite nicely to the sweet spot in the middle of funnel where I've kind of made my career. But it's that stuff and moving away from the 10 blue links and moving away from that, yep. that I think is going to be a real shift in how the front door of commerce and how merchants think about commerce uh, starts to evolve as well. Yeah, and to your point, how do you even acquire com you know customers in the first place? Not even about the checkout experience, but how do you position your product? Um, Tyler Cohen wrote recently, the primary audience for my writings is AI, right? Like yeah. AI bots are going to be scanning, ingesting, and reading everything, you know, soon at a greater rate probably than people. I've had that experience with you, Simon, uh, where I asked a question of Jeff ET, Jet GPT about fintech, and it ends up citing one of your posts. So I guess they do. They must like your stuff uh, too. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing what I can. I'm, ju I'm just a guy with a keyboard trying to trying to hammer things out over here. So I appreciate you for that, my friend. Yeah. And I, that made me think of one other um, stat or chart that was put up. Ahmad from Mercury put up a chart showing how many of his inbound customers were actually being referred by ChatGPT. So to your point, you're starting to see, and the numbers are low, but the number is, you know, up and, and to the right. Oh, no, we're... we're... I mean, it's it's three x uh, month over month for us at Sardine uh, in terms yeah. of our like uh, site traffic. It's it's really starting to grow, so we're we're spending time and energy there for sure. Yeah, and I think that's probably the thing to be tracking. It's not just growth of ingentic payment volumes. The tip of the spear is going to be growth in customer acquisition via AI chatbots. And to your point, that's yeah. starting to happen now. And you can actually measure it. Heck awesome. yeah, my friend. All right, this was fun. Uh, we this we should do this again sometime. We, turns out we do when we're not both tra well sometimes we are both traveling but other times traveling throws a wrench in it so yeah. good to Rex catch up, and my Simon occasionally talk fintech uh, when we can <laughs> <laughs> alright take care look after yourself my friend cheers